Okay, in previous videos we set up the computer to be able to receive scans from an MFP. And now we're going to set up the MFP to actually send those scans. In this case we're going to be using the Konica Minolta uh, machines. Uh, we're going to look at two different machines because the interfaces are a little bit different. And uh, so you could see one or the other on your Konica Minolta business class machine. But these principles apply to a lot of different machines, uh, other vendors as well. So this information uh, might be benefic beneficial if you have a Rico, uh, a Sharp, or whatever you might be working with. So we're going to open up our VM here. Okay. And here in this interface we have, this is a BizHub C308. So if you see an interface that looks like this, if you have the newer firmware, probably a newer machine. If you have an interface that looks like this, you have a older machine, or you could have a machine with older firmware that's uh, actually an 8 series. Either way, they operate exactly the same. If you're using one of the i-series machines that just recently came out, uh, I currently do not have the interface for one of those yet, but uh, I'm guessing it's going to be pretty much the same way. Now, a note, if you use Microsoft Edge and you are working with this interface, uh, these are uh, Microsoft Edge is notorious for when you go to a, another page that it will collapse the columns so that you can't see them, like this. If that happens, uh, you just hit the refresh and it will fix it it'll pop it back out for you. So just wanted to make mention of that uh, before we get started here. Okay, so like I said in previous videos, we set up FTP, we set up SMB. We're going to look at uh, setting up a button for both of those protocols. So whichever one applies to you will um, be the technique that you use, but they're very similar. So we're going to actually use the 308's interface and we're going to create a button to scan back to my folder in both SMB and FTP. Okay, so we're going to open this up and again we're going to hit the refresh so we can pop out our columns here. And let's create our button for our SMB first. Now, what you'll need to know is your information that uh, we gathered when we set up the various protocols for your path. When we set up the share folder for just uh, SMB or just share folder, we put the path on the root and we copied that information and we stuck it in a, in a little note here. So we have the, the, the computer's host name, we have the path we had created previously a user called copier and with a password of copier. So we'll need to know that information. With FTP, we are, we're going to use anonymous. So we don't need the username and password, but we are going to go ahead and type in anonymous as a username and anonymous as a password. So if you need to get your IP address or your folder, you might want to gather that real quick and then we can move forward. All right, so we're going to create our, uh, we'll go ahead and start with our SMB folder first. So I'm going to pop this back out again so you can see what it looks like again, because you're going to go down here to store address and then you're going to go address book. And then we're going to go to new registration. And as I said, we're going to do SMB first. So we're going to select SMB. And we're going to call this Jim's SMB scans. And we'll go ahead and index it. And we'll put it on the main address book interface. So if I want to use the host name, I can select that here and paste it 
in this box here. I want to check this. Our path, we're going to send it to the scans folder. So I just type that in. Now with Conic and Minolta machines, it does not require a slash before the folder. The only time you would use a slash is if you're sending to a folder within a folder. So say in the scans folder, I have another folder called invoices. I would type scan slash invoices here if I was going to send to a folder within a folder. But I do not need to put a slash before the actual uh, folder we're sending to. So it should look like this and we're going to use the copier account that we created and the copier password and click OK. And when we're done, we just click return. So now we have the Jim's SMB scans button on the copier. So at this point in time, I would go to the copier and send a test scan uh, to the folder and make sure it works. Let's go ahead and create our FTP scans button. So if I do new registration, And this time we're going to go to store address, address book, hit the drop down. We're going to select FTP. And we'll call this Jim's FTP scans. We'll index it. We're going to put it on the main address book uh, screen. In this case, we're going to use the IP address. Most of the time, I've found over the years of doing this, FTP works better with the IP address. For some reason, I, I, I really can't explain it. It just seems to work better. Again, like I said in the previous video, if you use the IP address, bear in mind if you have a major power outage and uh, your DHCP server or your router, whatever it is that cans out your IP addresses, when it comes back up, it could give you a different IP address. If that's the case, you need to find out uh, what the IP address is for your computer and go back into this button and change that. So for FTP, I'm just going to put a dot. We're going to send that to the default FTP site uh, destination. So in our FTP utility, we have it actually pointed to the scans folder. I'm just telling the FTP services Hey, just drop the documents directly into the default folder. Now, sometimes you can get by with just checking anonymous here, turning this on. But I have discovered sometimes that works and sometimes that doesn't. I usually will go ahead and put anonymous and anonymous in the user ID and password anyway. Go ahead and turn this on and then click OK. We'll hit return. Okay, and then we're done on creating the buttons. So after testing, we'll go into our scans folder. And here we see the documents that we sent uh, both with FTP and SMB. Now, if you run into some issues with either one of those protocols. Uh, sometimes like if it's an IP address issue or you have an issue with DNS, uh, it might require a little bit of troubleshooting. You might have to reach out to your vendor for a little bit of help. But if you're just setting up a, a quick scan folder and scan destination to use with your copier, uh, this is uh, a good place to start. If you have any questions, feel free to shoot us an email and we'll see you next time. Thank you.